Good morning and thanks for joining me in today's video. In this video I wanted to talk a little bit about why we use balloons and the difference between a zone of opposition and abdominal opposition with breathing. So in Postural Restoration Institute Science they talk about a zone of apposition and we've talked about this a little bit in other videos but what a zone of apposition is is the underside of your ribs is where your abdominal muscles especially your obliques and transverse abdominis start. They go down and they end somewhere on your pelvis. And when we exhale, especially for a prolonged period of time, our abdominals, the internal obliques and transverse abdominis especially, are activated to pull the ribs down. When these ribs come down, they go over the top of the diaphragm, creating the domed shape that is characteristic of the relaxed state of the diaphragm that happens with exhalation. So the area of under those ribs that goes over the diaphragm to create that dome in this front to back and side to side mainly plane, although it also happens in the rotational plane too, is known as a zone of apposition. So the ribs come over the diaphragm, right? They are opposed. A-P-P-O-S-E-D, opposed, okay? Now, abdominal opposition, O-P-P-O-S-E-D, is something that happens when you breathe out, you get your abdominals engaged, and then on the next breath in, you keep those abdominals engaged. So when the diaphragm pulls down as you breathe in, there are abdominal muscles that are keeping the ribs pulled down so that the ribs don't lift or sink in a little bit higher up, okay? If you don't have abdominal opposition, sometimes what you'll see is that the lower, very lowest ribs are lifting up and out in a dyssynchronous fashion. That's not supposed to be what happens. Or in other cases where there's really no abdominal opposition and you've been breathing dyssynchronously for a long time, there's a area here a little bit higher up where the diaphragm attaches. And if the diaphragm starts pulling in on those area of the ribs, then you can have this indentation that forms here, which are known as Harrison's grooves. And uh, if you're seeing that, you know that person has been breathing pretty crappy for a pretty long time. So the question is, how do we get A, a zone of opposition, and B, abdominal opposition, and why do we want them? So first, the why do we want them? We need a zone of opposition, especially on our left side to put our diaphragm in a relatively relaxed domed position. That allows the nervous system to chill out, A, and B, that allows us on this left side to keep that diaphragm domed use, and use as a breathing muscle while we force air to go over to this side and expand the right chest wall. So that's, that's why we want it. And then in terms of abdominal opposition, it's kind of more of what I just said about if you have the abdominals keeping the ribs down, as you breathe in, the pressure here is then dispersed and you get good expansion through your rib cage. So in order to get a zone of apposition, you need to take your left side of your rib cage and you need to bring it down with an exhalation. Now some ways to enhance this are to Tuck the pelvis under, posterior rotation of the pelvis. That's really pretty easy in sitting. You just relax through your sit bones. And then the other thing is in this side to side plan, if you bring your left shoulder lower than your right, kind of reach to the ground with your left hand as you breathe out. You should feel the left ribs pulling down back and in. After you breathe out, you pause. And it's during that pause, you're trying to have a sense of relaxation here in the left side, allowing that left diaphragm to dome. Now you should have a zone of apposition and you should feel a slight tensioning in the abdominals, especially on the left side, kind of at the bottom of the ribs where we talked about that they start their attachment. So um, once you have that, you want to hang on to that tension down here and you want to keep this belly pulled in. And if you keep it pulled in and you breathe in, what happens eventually is 
the pressure starts to push out against this abdomen, but the abs are keeping it back, and then that pressure gets dispersed up and through the rib cage, and you get some expansion with the next inhalation. Then when you go to exhale, it's a more passive process like it's supposed to be, and you get a more complete exhale with better abdominal activity on the exhale. So in PRI, they use balloons, and the balloons are really a cue for abdominal activity with an exhale because it provides a little bit of resistance. The other cool thing about the PRI balloon technique is that once you've exhaled into the balloon, if you don't pinch with your finger and you don't pinch with your lips, but you simply put the tongue up on the roof of the mouth, pause, and then breathing through your nose without pinching, you have to maintain that end expiratory pressure and the tension in your abdominals to keep the air in the balloon but as your tongue comes up and domes into the uh, roof of your mouth, you're creating a zone of apposition with your soft palate in your mouth as you breathe in through your nose. And so you're getting good chest expansion, you're getting good abdominal activity, and you're getting good palate uh, function. And there's this one little muscle that we talked about, the lateral pterygoid on this, especially on the left side, which is also activated with that technique. So we're gonna go through that technique now and before we do it, I'll say what it is. So you blow in through the balloon. That gets your abs down. You feel that tension here. Then you're going to pause for a good three to five seconds and just relax as you pause. Then you're not going to pinch the balloon, but you're going to bring the tongue up into the roof of the mouth. Hopefully the soft palate goes with it. And then you're going to breathe in through your nose without pinching and Exhale back through the balloon, get even more abs, and then you're gonna repeat for a sequence of three to four or five breaths. So this is how it's gonna look. And then the most fun part, you get to let the air out of the balloon and make a fart sound. And so one note about this, on the first inhale, you probably heard me taking that inhale. And if you want to maximize this technique or any breathing technique, you want to have the most silent, uh, unnoticeable inhale possible. Some way that people get in trouble with this is they pull down on that exhale through the ribs, but then they do a big inhale and they pull up with their upper chest or neck and that's kind of undoing the point of the whole thing so make sure you can't hear your breath in and you don't pull up through your neck um, or your upper chest on your inhale uh, the other thing too is that you want to let the breathing out through the balloon do the work of the abdominals the word i like to use is notice so you want to notice that tension there and then hang on to it become aware of it and then incorporate it right um, it is not forcing. A lot of times what people do is if they force and they try to make it a crunch, they end up using a lot of this rectus abdominis muscle, the center abdomen muscle that comes into the bottom of your sternum. And on the other side of your sternum are those sternocleidomastoid muscles in the front of your neck that often we're having a tough time turning off. So you don't want to turn this into a tug of war between your rectus abdominis and your sternocleidomastoids with a sternal bone in between. So the movement we're trying to get is rib movement down back and in and you're becoming aware of it don't force it just become aware of it include it and um, then you get the most out of this technique so to review a zone of apposition is especially on the left side when the ribs come down over the diaphragm to allow it to have its domed position and the parts that are opposed are this costal portion of the diaphragm and the kind of underside of the rib cage if you can imagine that and once you have a zone of apposition, which you might enhance by doing a posterior tilt of your pelvis or reaching down, then you're going to become aware of that tension through an exhale with your abdominals and then do a quiet inhale without losing that 
uh, that is abdominal opposition. So the abdominals are opposing the action of the diaphragm as the diaphragm works on an inhale. So have fun with this balloon technique. Um, yeah, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Peace.